Hello everyone, this is Matt Wagner from Emmy Wagner Performance. This video will guide you through the tuning of your dual flow PCV valve and it's meant as a supplement to the shop manual that ships with your valve. You can also download the shop manual from our website at www.emmywagner.com. The first step to tuning your valve is to select which tuning mode you need to use. To do this, you'll need a manifold vacuum reading from your engine when it's warmed up and at idle. So assuming you have that information, you can turn to this table in the shop manual. If you have more than 10 inches of mercury at idle, you can see you'll be using dual flow mode with the high vacuum spring. If you have between 7 and 10 inches of mercury at idle, you'll also be using dual flow mode, but you'll need to switch to the low vacuum spring, and we'll cover how to do that in just a moment. If you have less than 7 inches of mercury at idle, or if your vacuum signal is choppy or unsteady, you'll be using fixed orifice mode, and there are more details regarding fixed orifice mode tuning covered in the shop manual. We'll be discussing dual flow mode tuning in this video. So we're assuming from the previous step that you know which spring you need to use, either the high vacuum or low vacuum spring. The valve ships from Emmy Wagner with the high vacuum spring installed, so if you've determined that you need the high vacuum spring, you can skip this step. Looking at the two springs next to each other, the high vacuum spring is the shorter of the two, and you can see this is the low vacuum spring on the right. It's a little bit longer, but the wire diameter is a little bit thinner. So if you've determined that you need to change over to the low vacuum spring, uh, continue watching and we'll show you how to do that next. If you've determined from the previous step that you need to install the low vacuum spring, you'll need to take the valve apart. So the first step to doing that is to remove the two socket head cap screws that hold the upper and lower valve body together. So you can use the Allen wrench included in your kit to do that. So once the screws are removed, you can separate the upper valve body and set it aside. Next, take the high vacuum spring and remove it and install the low vacuum spring in its place. You can see the spring is installed in the bore of the bronze bushing in the lower valve body. Next, you'll reinstall the upper valve body, being careful to seat the spring in the bore shown, and then reinstall the two socket head cap screws that hold the upper and lower body together, and hand tighten them. So the first step to tuning in dual flow mode is to make sure that the cruise circuit is disabled for initial tuning. Now the valve is shipped this way from Emmy Wagner, but we're including this for those of you that might be retuning an existing valve. So we want to disable the cruise circuit so that we'll only be working with the idle circuit when the engine is first started. So to do this, you want to make sure that the cruise circuit screw, which is labeled on the top of the valve, is about a half inch above flush from the top surface of the valve. And you can also check this by making sure that the screw is 10 turns out from flush. Uh, they work out to be the same dimension. Next, we'll set the idle circuit flow rate. To do this, turn to the table shown in your shop manual, and based on your engine size and idle manifold vacuum level, select the recommended number of turns out for the idle screw as a starting point for tuning. Lightly seat the idle screw by turning it clockwise, and then back the idle screw out counterclockwise, the number of turns recommended by the table in the shop manual. Now that the idle and cruise circuit are preset, install the valve to your engine. Be sure to use a vacuum source that's intended for PCV usage that will distribute blow by to all cylinders evenly such as the PCV port at the base of your carburetor. We will now warm up the engine to get ready for tuning.
Now remove the valve from the engine. Make sure to wear a glove as it will be very hot. Next, remove the cross passage plug with the Allen wrench provided in the kit. We will now install the vacuum adapter fitting which will allow us to connect a vacuum gauge to the valve. With the vacuum gauge attached, reinstall the valve in the valve cover. You'll see that it doesn't fully engage in the grommet due to the vacuum adapter fitting. You may need to hold the valve lightly in place using the cruise circuit adjustment screw allen wrench provided. We'll now start the engine and tune the cruise circuit. With the engine at idle, turn the cruise screw clockwise until the vacuum gauge jumps up off of zero, typically to between 3 and 5 inches of mercury. This indicates the valve is in cruise mode. Now slowly turn the cruise screw counterclockwise until the vacuum gauge returns to zero without fluctuation, indicating the valve is now back in idle mode. Turn the cruise screw an additional three quarters of a turn counterclockwise beyond this point. When the engine is revved, the vacuum gauge should briefly jump up off of zero and the cruise ball should move downward in its bore. The last step is to remove the vacuum adapter fitting and to reinstall the cross passage plug. Hand tighten the cross passage plug using the allen wrench provided in the kit. The valve can now be reinstalled to the engine and you're ready to road test. After testing, you can consult the shop manual for recommendations on airflow adjustments. Remember, if the idle airflow is changed, the cruise circuit will need to be retuned using the vacuum gauge. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at